Yo, what is up guys? I wanted to uh make another video and I've already I would say I've actually already done this video um in the past, but I wanted to make an updated guide of how to play games, not just play games, but how to use uh third party launches like uh you know like like bottles lutris heroic but also you know setting up steam uh what what launch commands to use um what proton to use nowadays as you know linux is is moving at such a quick pace right now for the past 10 months of me using it there has been so much evolution and, and just like development time and effort that's been put in to linux that is it's dramatically improved from me having to use use DX, dxvk async and you know having to use glorious egg rolls uh proton ge versions to get like the maximum performance to now where i only have to use i only have to use proton like the basic proton on steam now and i can just use proton 8 and all my games work and if a game doesn't work you can just turn on the force thing and use experimental so back just like uh, go back a little bit so this will be a video of basically the you know like ultimate guide to you know setting up uh, your Linux machine for gaming um, and it's really not that hard as well if you go and just watch this video and look through everything uh, we'll, we'll go through everything and you'll learn a bunch as well I think it's one of the greatest things when you when you try Linux gaming or anything really Linux related is you, you learn a lot and it makes you a lot better when it comes to using a operating system I would say so that you know if you, if you go back to Windows that you know that, that terrible OS it's not terrible but you know it has its flaws so with Linux, but you go back to Windows and you know you'll be more tech savvy, you know, from learning everything from Linux. So one of the first things is basically making sure that your NVIDIA drivers are installed. And I think for most distros today, it is really, really simple to install your NVIDIA drivers. Uh, it's basically, you know, for most Ubuntu based distros, uh, you can easily launch like a software updater piece of like software um, and go to like, it's called other software and you can just install a NVIDIA driver. Installing NVIDIA drivers is really easy. So if you're on Fedora, um, I think you have to add the non-free and free Fedora repo. Um, for me, um, I'm running AMD. So for people that are, you know, have AMD cards, you're in luck as installing drivers on uh, Linux is uh, not needed. Uh, for me, I'm on Pop OS, which is a very um, stable distro, and so they use a very old version of Mesa because um, it's based off, I think it's like Ubuntu 22.04, um, so they haven't, they, they're on like version 22 something, uh, but I switched it out for uh, a Mesa Git version. So if you are running AMD, this is what I would do, is I would first check what Mesa version you're running, as it's quite important to know what Mesa version you're running as Mesa is a main um, piece of the AMD driver that works uh, with gaming that like makes basically makes gaming possible there's a lot of other things that makes gaming possible but this is like the main the main piece of the AMD driver that will determine if you have a good experience on Linux when you try to play games so you want to check and do this command here glx info um, space minus b and you can check your Mesa version right here. For me, I'm using Mesa 23.1.1 um, as I am using a Mesa Git build from, I think, it's, I think his name is like Kiask, something like that. So I swapped it, swapped out the one that is used in Pop OS as because it doesn't have the graphics pipeline, which is a, another very important thing that you need to have a good AMD Linux gaming experience because the graphics pipeline is able to load shaders uh, insanely fast um, on DirectX 11, DirectX 10, uh, and DirectX 9 games. Because uh, in the past, you had to use DSVK Async and a lot of other little tricks to make the experience um, viable. But now that Valve developers have implemented that into the driver, a really solid you know, um, shader compilation that isn't at draw time. Because um, before, like I said, it would basically any animation that would be played or any texture that hadn't been loaded when it appeared on screen that texture or animation had to be loaded as soon as it came up so it didn't get loaded um like it is now where it gets loaded um i think it's before or it, it loads it so damn fast um all loads it in particular scenes where you're like on a loading screen just where you don't see it um so if you want to install Mesa git 
um, you know, I'll leave in the description, uh, you know, for different like distros of how to get MesaGit installed as uh, multiple distros you can install MesaGit on. I've installed it on Fedora, I've installed it on Ubuntu based distros, and then of course you can install it on Arch if you want to. You can easily go to the AUR or even if you're um, want to go even the other route you can go to the chaotic AUR if you don't want to build it even though I would recommend you go through the AUR route because um, that works uh, really well I would say so the next thing I would say is um, this is not really recommended and this might break your system uh, but especially if you're on I would say with a Nvidia card you'll have uh, some major issues and I think it's a common issue with Nvidia cards because um, I run a second a second Linux machine that has a NVIDIA RTX 2060 in it. And I just use it for like a server, basically a Jellyfin server. And um, I run just Nabora on it, uh, which I don't think that I don't need to be running Nabora on it. But I just like I haven't bothered to switch out the distro for something more like stable, uh, like Ubuntu or something like that. Or maybe like Linux Mint. I don't really know. Um, but one of the things I would... Uh, recommend doing if you're on an AMD system is install a custom kernel. Um, now there is different custom kernels that you can install. You don't even have to install a custom kernel. You could install the generic, uh, you like mainline kernel as well. Um, so for me, I'm you can see here I'm running uh, Xan mod, which is one custom kernel, and there's another one called I think it's called Licorice. Licorice. I don't know how to say it honestly. Licorice, something like that. Um, but uh, the, the one of the things is that this is a rolling re uh, release kernel, so it gets updated really quickly. And that's why I talk about NVIDIA cards as um, it has sometimes when you update the Linux kernel, um, I think the NVIDIA drivers, they don't get signed properly. Some of that, they just don't um, install properly on that kernel because that kernel is too new. So I wouldn't recommend, and this is this actually happened today, oh sorry, yesterday, when I tried to install a custom kernel for my friend on his machine, and he has a um, GTX 1050 Ti, and for some reason the NVIDIA driver just wasn't, it did not want to install on Xam mod for some unknown reason, and it's probably because it's so new, it's on 6.3.4, like that is, that is relatively new. It's basically on the arch level of, you know, Linux kernel uh, up updates. So if you do want to install, um, a custom kernel on your machine. I'll leave links down down below of like a couple websites that offer some really good um, custom kernels that are rolling. And you can install like an LTS version if you don't want like lots of updates with the Linux kernel. Um, this one is the rolling release. And so far it's been running amazing. And <clears throat> the reason I say a custom kernel is they usually have different like scheduling um, improvements or performance tweaks that um, improve your gaming experience, uh, where, like, if you have a relatively shit machine, like my friend has, uh, I think it's like a, what, a Ryzen 5 3100 with a GTX 1050 Ti and only 8 gigs of RAM, um, as a custom kernel would help him a decent amount that may give him an extra 10 to 20 FPS as, you know, he doesn't get, like, that much FPS in games today, he, can just break 60 FPS, so it's a bit hard for him. Uh, but yeah, I would rec I'd recommend installing custom kernel if you run an AMD machine. You can try it on an, on a Nvidia machine if if you want to. You can, and it probably will work. I have tried it before and it has worked. Um, but just just a warning if you want to install a custom kernel. So um, to actually get into the meats and potatoes, uh, no, like what what launch commands should you use and what Proton version should you use, like on Steam, all third-party launches like Bottles, Lutris, Heroic Game Launcher, all those, um, and we'll look at how to set up Steam properly, um, because one of the things is that you don't need shader compilation, or is it called shader cache, or whatever it is on Steam, you don't need that, you do not need that enabled anymore is because NVIDIA drivers have a Vulkan extension for loading shaders properly um, and the AMD like I said before Mesa 23 um, you can use a command to enable it or in Mesa 23.1 it is enabled by default so you actually don't need the Mesa cache enabled anymore so that means you don't need to do the Vulkan shader loader thing that would take fucking oh like it would take 
up to 10 minutes to 15 minutes to fucking load it like just when you launch apex it was so annoying but now you can disable it because it was it's not really needed to be honest it may be in like directx 12 games um but i've been playing directx 12 like i've been playing division 2 on directx 12 and it runs fine as directx 12 has its own like shader compilation thing that's separate from um dx 11 10 9 but we'll be um setting up the steam application now it's really easy to install steam um on multiple different distros uh for me all i had to do was go to the pop shop which is here on my other monitor and i would just search for steam now you can either install this is the one here for me uh don't worry about these ones here just this one here one of the things is that um i am using the debian version so that means it's running the runtime like system runtime version of steam um uh, while on default when you first launch this particular store it's going to show the the uh, flat pack version of steam which is not what you want to install of course you can install it and it works really well but since it uses for me um since i have an amd card um i'm using mesa i want to use my mesa git version which the flat pack is not able to do for me i'm pretty sure there is a way of doing it setting like permissions for it to see it and then it probably could use it but i'd rather just select the debian version and call it a day and so that you know i can use mesa 23.1 so um you know you install it you launch it you sign in and uh it won't look like this it will look like the old version of steam because recently steam got a very uh, big beta update a couple weeks ago that dramatically improved the ui and performance on linux and introduced like uh recently i can add my uh my flat pack applications as a non-steam game so if i want to do let's say steam play i can send it to my laptop and i can launch like yuzu or simu um on this list in uh what's it called steam big picture mode um and then i can just launch it from there and then play fucking you know um any switch any wii u game i want without having to like you know manually launch usually with my mouse and then jump back onto my laptop and then play it um so i would suggest that you install uh the steam beta you just go to settings and you go to account and i won't show it as it will expose uh my email address and all that but um you want to go to steam account and then there's like a little beta section where you can choose uh, a particular beta version and you just want to choose i think it's just called steam steam beta um because there's like two options there just select steam beta it will install it and then you'll have it now uh for the next thing i was talking about was the shader cache as it's something that isn't needed and i've turned it off completely i don't use it at all Here, lots of other people recommend that you do use it but i say don't use it i've seen no issues in multiple games that i've been playing i've been playing apex legends uh i've i've dumped like another what 80 90 not 80 maybe like 50 hours 40 something hours um more into apex this past week um and i have distro hopped like three times and i have disabled this and it works flawlessly because i use mesa 23.1 and it loads it so quickly i don't notice it so what I would suggest is that you turn it off because NVIDIA also has a Vulkan extension that uses um, like shader comp uh, compilation like relatively um, faster than the Mesa AMD uh, GPL option. It actually, I'm pretty sure it loads it faster. So you want to turn that off. And basically uh, you go to compatibility next. So this is where you need to enable Steam Play so that you can use Proton on your Windows games. So you click enable Steam Play for supported titles and you click enable Steam Play for all other titles. And that means that it will use Proton on your Windows games so that you can play it on Linux through Proton, either it be through, you know, DXVK, VKD3D, all those API translation things. Um, and then basically it's going to auto select Proton Experimental. Now, Proton Experimental is fine. I would say that I suggest that you install Proton. Uh, you just select Proton 8 as it's the mainline one. It's the stable one that sh will mostly work for the majority of your games. And you won't have to really have any ha ha hassles because today I actually had my friend, he installed Battlefield 4. And um, I forgot that 
he was using Proton Experimental for run other titles with. So when he launched Battlefield 4, it didn't launch. It said it was launched, but it wasn't in the background. And I was like, hmm, what's the issue? And it was that he was using Proton Experimental. And I would suspect Proton Experimental to work because it's newer than Proton 8, but it didn't. So I was like, oh, sorry, you had to fucking switch this to Proton 8. Um, so you can use um, Glorious Egg Rolls one as well. I have a really um, nice app that I use now. I don't use Proton, um, what's it called? I don't use Proton Up, I use Proton Plus. I, I don't even have it installed. The hell? Um, but yeah, there's a really, a really good app that I use. Am I being blind here? The hell? I must have uninstalled it. Um, it's called Proton, uh, Proton Plus. I don't use Proton Up anymore as it's kind of like, it's KDE, uh, what's it called? QT, um, GUI, uh, it's a GUI, a KDE, fuck me, I can't speak right now. It's a Q, <laughs> QT. Um, GUI interface that I personally don't like um, and so I rather use Proton Plus which has been in development for like a couple months now. I tried it a couple months back when it first came out and it was really buggy and it like it like relied on Proton Up for some reason. Um, like it didn't have the mirrors for downloading the GE versions or Wine GE versions but now it got like a big overhaul and I've been using it for like two months now and it works great. It is installed, what the hell? And basically here you can grab it uh, by going to Steam, Proton GE, Releases, and here is uh, this one here, GE Proton 8.3. And Proton GE, I would say, isn't really necessary anymore. It is necessary for Wine GE as because Lutris Heroic Bottles, all those wine game launches, they all use the wine GE versions as like their main versions for playing games like Overwatch, um, any third party apps like the Ubisoft launcher, EA launcher, etc. Um, but for, I would say for Steam, Proton, uh, uh, why I'm saying this is because, well, Proton rebased uh, their wine version from, I think it was version 7 to version 8. And um, it was a really exciting rebase because um, there was like so many fixes that were implemented in Wine that Steam hadn't uh, implemented yet. So a couple games uh, had some weird like little quirks and issues. And that's where Proton GE was actually like viable as it has those patches. Um, but now that, you know, the Valve developers uh, moved Proton with the Proton 8 release, they rebased Wine. Um, from 7 to 8, all all those patches have came uh, rolled into Proton, uh, the stable stable version of Proton that I would say that you can just use Proton, the stable Proton 8 or whatever updates come out next and you'll be fine basically with playing like relatively any of your games. Now, the next thing I would do um, is probably, you know, do a restart. If you haven't enabled these, enable these, it will tell you to restart. And when you do restart, you basically want to um, you know, go back um, and start playing your games, basically. Uh, on NVIDIA, there is a certain command. Uh, I will have to find it. Um, so basically, the command you want to use is uh, this command right here, which I'll put in the description. And basically what this does is it makes sure that it doesn't delete the shader cache that gets built on your NVIDIA card. As I said before, the NVIDIA uses a Vulkan extension uh, to load shaders in your game, and it does it really well. But one of the things that happens is if you don't use this command, um, it's going to delete that shader cache and it's going to rebuild it every time you relaunch the game. So you have to have this in your launch options and uh, unless NVIDIA like enables this by default that it doesn't delete it, you're going to have to use this command, um, which is what I told my friend to use on multiple uh, you know, games he wanted to play on Linux. Um, but for, for me, um, I don't use game mode anymore because Pop OS's, uh, like I forgot what it's called, I think it's like Pop OS Scheduler um, is really good now at making a full screen game uh, run really well that I don't, I don't, I don't need game mode. But if you do want game mode, um, you can easily do, you know, like fucking, you can just do sudo apt install game mode. 
pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, for me, it's already installed. Um, you can go to the GitHub page of game mode and find out what distro, uh, the distro that you have and the steps to installing it. And then after you've installed game mode, you can just do game mode run um, and then put a command there and then you'll be able to use it. And same goes for the this thing here. You need to add a command here so that it actually that command actually works and gets activated when you play the game. Um, if you don't have that, have that there, this ain't going to be used at all by the game. And that's basically it for Steam, I would say. Um, there's not much else. If you don't, if a game, let's say a game doesn't run and you want to troubleshoot uh, with different Proton versions, you can do force the use of a Pacific Steam Play compatibility tool. Well, that will give you the option to use um, Proton versions that are relatively old, a hotfix build, which is kind of like experimental, but hasn't been like a Pacific patch hasn't been uh, brought into experimental yet. Um, or yeah, you can use the GE version or Proton Experimental, basically any version. So if you have an issue with a game, you can just enable that and then retest it and see if it works. And yeah, like I said, there's really nothing else you need to do. Just install the game, run it. Um, for me, like if I want to play Battlefield 4, I can easily just click play um, and it will basically launch just like any other game. It will, should bring up the, the EA app um, that should come up very, very, very soon. Um, and then the game can launch and you can basically just like play your games and you can see here it's launching. The performance is, is relatively good. I mostly hit the, uh, the, I think it's like 200 FPS cap on Battlefield 4. Um, but that's because I have a relatively powerful GPU, but the experience, you know, I've had playing Battlefield 4 on Linux has been like really good. And same goes for Battlefield 5, Battlefield 1. Um, there's no real big difference between performance now because of like, you know, I'm using Mesa 23.1, uh, you know, and the graphics pipeline does its job really, really well. Um, you know, I would really want Destiny to work. That'd be cool. Yo, Bungie, can you enable this? Can you just, can you just enable um, uh, the anti-cheat? Bat uh, is it Battle Eye? I think it is. Yeah, Battle Eye. Can you enable Proton support for Battle Eye, please, uh, Bungie? That'd be really fucking cool for both Steam Deck users and Linux desktop users. It is a actual like request that so thousands of people have been asking for. I'm probably, I'm probably even say almost over like ten thousand people. Um, I think even that Reddit post that got made like uh, by the Bungie community uh, managers on Reddit who posted about Linux support and what people thought. I think they had like twenty k of votes or something like that. And there is people commenting on it every day asking for support. So if you want Destiny 2 to work on Linux, I would 100% jump into their fucking forums, jump onto that Reddit post and comment that you want to play this game because it, it is able to be enabled. It is, it's, it's able to work on Linux. Like I, I think uh, I heard when, when Destiny 2 first came out, people were able to play it on Linux, but they got banned because, you know, you're not allowed to. But you were able to, and the game ran fine, I'm pretty sure. Maybe with some stutters, because it's like, you know, probably like four years ago. Um, but here's this, here's Battlefield 4, this is finally launched. As you can see here, it's working. And of course, you can install, uh, you know, if you want an FPS overlay, uh, you can use Mango HUD. It's one of the best FPS overlays ever, I would say. Um, out there and you can uh, use an app called Go Overlay, which is a GUI interface for customizing Mango HUD and it's really fucking good, I would say. Um, you know, you can go to multiplayer, go to server, and I was playing this today with, um, you know, a bunch of, a uh, couple of friends that are also own Battlefield 4. And yeah, like, that's basically it. And for Steam, that's basically it. Now, the next thing I would say <coughs> is, um, if, let's say you want to play Overwatch. Or you want to play, uh, maybe you own, like, you own Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 5 or Battlefield 1, um, you know, any of those games. You own it on other launches, because I did a couple of, uh, like a month ago, I owned it on the EA app slash Origin, um, still, and before uh, EA had a, a lovely sale. But what you can do um, is you can launch... Um, an app now I, there's a couple of apps that you can use um, I use uh, bottles for example for my um, installations with uh, apps like EA or Ubisoft or Blizzard um, you can easily launch it here um, you know of course you go to your store and you find it and 
you should use the flat pack version of bottles because that's the official version that is developed by the main developers. If you're on Arch, you can try the AUR version. I've tried it a couple, like a week or two ago, I was on Arch and I tried it. And for some reason, I couldn't download the mirrors. I don't know why. Um, and I couldn't um, even launch the app at all after switching back and forth between the Flatpak and AUR. The AUR just would not launch. And then on the Flatpak version, I couldn't download the mirrors. And I don't know why. And it, some other people have had issues. But for some reason, I go to Fedora. I go to Pop! OS. Um, and it works fine. It launches. It loads. It downloads things properly. I really don't know what the issue is. But uh, if anyone can tell me in the comments why fucking bottles both the the flat pack version won't download the mirrors and then the AUR version won't even launch that'd be great but uh yeah just search for bottles on your store um or you can run it through the terminal you know um grab the flat pack one you can grab the system wide one as well which might use different dependencies with the how the app launches and gets used when you play games but you can just grab the flat pack one and i already have a couple bottles created uh from the past couple of weeks of setting it up because i wanted to play like uh, today I installed Division One as I really wanted to just like just go see what it looks like because I've kind of forgotten what Division the, just the normal first Division game looked like. So I downloaded it, played it, and it it uh it ran really fucking well. I got like a hundred and seventy FPS uh, with zero stutters. With the um I did have to use the um, GPL command, which I'll actually tell you now it is um. So if you're not on Mesa 23.1, but let's say you're on Mesa 23 or even below, I think you can use it, but it's an experimental feature. On Mesa 23, you can use it as it's the like um, official one, but on Mesa 23.1, uh, sorry, it's, not a f it's like a stable uh, version of GPL. If you're on Mesa 23.1, then it's enabled by default. So if you're on Mesa 23.0, uh, you can just go into your launch options and do rdv underscore perf test equals gpl in lowercase um, and then you know add your command on <clears throat> on the end and that would be it <laughs> back to bottles uh, so for me when i was installing ubisoft launcher today um, all i had to do was basically download the wine ge version so we would go to ge wine I would select Wine GE Proton 8.7, um, or if you want a newer version, let's say Bottles hasn't updated because some reason, um, sometimes Bottles takes a little bit longer to implement or just pull in the newest uh, Wine GE versions. Um, you can go to, oh my God, where is it? There it is. You can launch Proton Plus. You can go to Bottles Flatpak. Wine GE or Proton GE. Uh, what well, Proton GE is not recommend rock not recommended to be used on uh, like these types of launches for uh, third party uh, game launches. Uh, so you want to grab this one here, uh, the latest one. If you want like a newer one that uh, Bottles hasn't done, but basically you just want to get this one, um, and that's basically it. You can just go and create a bottle. Um, you could do like test or whatever. It will create it. Now it is if you select gaming, it's going to use the soda runner which i wouldn't i would not suggest using at all because it is really really old um and if you try to play something like overwatch you're gonna have issues with like when you die your cursor is gonna come up because that was a bug in wine and it got fixed on the um rebase of proton to proton 8 so Soda is on 7.0-9 uh, which is on wine 7 so that bug is still there so basically, <clears throat> you want to use Wine GE. After you've created it, it will. You go to settings here. You go to runner. You select Wine GE. Um, these should be already filled out. If it's not, just select the latest one that you have. Um, and then, <clears throat> you know, I would suggest you use F Sync for synchronization. Um, you know, I have monitor performance, so that's Mango HUD that's being used there. And of course, if you want these things to actually work, because when you install bottles, it will be grayed out. So you want to actually go and find uh, or go to Mango HUD's uh, GitHub, and you want to find the flat pack installation so that bottles can actually use uh, Mango HUD. If you scroll down here, we should find it, as you can see here. So you would just copy this, paste it in your terminal. 
um, it will you want to select system this might not, might not even come up like on fedora i don't think this comes up but for me i select system and then you want to select the latest version which is 22 so you would select two for me it's already installed so it's skipping it but that would that's how you get something like manga hud installed uh you know there's a couple other things like game mode uh game mode should work out of the box i'm pretty sure and the same goes if you want to use obs vk capture which is a amazing uh game capture on obs that's like a plugin for capturing vulcan uh full screen like vulcan windows uh, it's really really good i would say and then uh of course you know for me i had to set up rdv underscore perf set so if you actually want to add that or if you wanted to add the let's say the nvidia one uh <clears throat> i'm pretty sure i have it is it in here no i'm gonna have to re-grab it one sec uh you're gonna grab the gl shader disk you know cache skip cleanup um command and steam just froze on me again this motherfucker why does it do that that is a weird beta bug lamau so basically um you would just copy this for example let me actually copy it this time or is it not gonna what all right because we have to type it out see we do underscore underscore gl underscore shader underscore disk underscore cache um underscore skip underscore cleanup and then you don't do the equals you would just select the tick and then you'd give it a value of one and uh that would be it you would have it uh working and you wouldn't need to worry about um your shadow cache being deleted so the next thing um would be like well um it's time to install an app for example you want to install uh you know ubisoft connect or you want to install the ea launcher so you would just go to install programs um, because you can add shortcuts as well if let's say you have a dot exe of an app you want to test out or if you want to just run it straight away you can run executable um like a while back i was testing some mouse software for my um my lamzu atlantis which is a mouse enthusiast gaming mouse that's really popular at the moment but the software doesn't work on linux but it doesn't need to work on linux but i really wanted to try to see if it worked on linux so i downloaded the .exe and tried to run it and well it did launch but it didn't work at all it didn't show battery percentage or any of that but if you want it you can run it executable but you know what we're here for is to install like a game launcher for example ubisoft connect so you would go here scroll all the way down um, and select Ubisoft Connect, little download button. It would launch a installer page here. Um, you click start installation. It will go through the installer steps and then uh, Ubisoft Connect would launch and you sign into your account and you can start playing games really easily. Um, you also got some other apps here like Star Citizen. Uh, I know someone, uh, you know, it may work poorly by the way. It says here a little description of what uh, the experience might be, uh, but I'm pretty sure it does work relatively well now. And I've heard on Reddit that people, um, have an, a fine experience setting up Star Citizen on either Bottles or, or Lutris or even Heroic as well. And that's the other thing. You don't have to use Bottles. Uh, you can use uh, Lutris if you want to. It really prefers like what you prefer. Like for me, I like Bottles because it's a lot more, I would say, like easier to customize and chain th change things relatively quickly. Um, you can change things really quickly on Lutris as well. I just prefer the UI and UX design of this application. So, um, of course, you got like your other launches as well that, that, that I was talking about. Now, I don't have, uh, do you have Lutris installed? Okay, I do have Lutris installed. I don't think I've uh, launched it yet though. Yeah, so um, Lutris is another very popular app that you probably will get recommended to use. And of course you can use it. It works really well and you can add environment variables slash launch, launch commands. Um, uh, you can set up, you know, um, Overwatch, uh, you know, Ubisoft. There's cool app integrations with accounts. So like you sign in on the left side and you can sign in with your account and it will drag in all your games into a little library where you can like click and, and install and it will grab a, an install script for you and just, you know, start. As you can see here, like I'm saying here, like you can sign into Origin, you can sign into Ubisoft Connect. You can sign in, sign into Steam if you want to, which I'm pretty sure it might have already grabbed mine. I haven't signed in, but it might have already grabbed it. I'm not gonna lie. And there's also another app that you can use that I've uh, tested out. That's called Cart Cartridges. Cartridges, yeah. <laughs> and um, this grabs. It's kind of similar. It grabs like literally all of your games from either um, Steam, Bottles, Lutris, Heroic. 
Um, I think maybe even like app images maybe as well. Um, for me, I haven't like, don't have any. Okay, here it is here. It says uh, it imports Steam, Lutris, Heroic, Bottles, and Itch. So there is multiple, uh, you know, options for you. And it, you can set up, a, you know, the installation path where these are. Um, and yeah, you can like even import things from Heroic within, within Heroic. So you can import like Epic Games, GOG Games, or even side loaded games. And then as we can see here, it's oh, Lutris is uh, grabbed to my Steam library and it has detected which ones are installed as well. And I think that's it really for, for Linux gaming, you know, Linux gaming has 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 come very far recently. Um, in the past like ten months of me using it, where I'm I'm kind of running out of videos to do. Uh, to be honest, like I was trying to for like many months. I think it's been like two months since I made a, another video about Linux or a Linux benchmark. Like I I could continue to do Linux benchmark videos, but I probably will do a couple more when new games come out. I may do some more this week sometime. Uh, but I wanted to do something more technical and explain uh, how to do it. Uh, and one of the best, you know, tutorials is how to play, uh, you know, games on Linux and, and what to use when you are setting up uh, Linux as an operating system as it's a very, uh, it could be a very daunting and very confusing thing to do uh, for a new user. You know, when, you know, when you buy a laptop or you buy a desktop, it's pre-installed with Windows and the drivers are already set up for you. And, you know, all you really have to do is just like update, you know, you don't even have to update on Windows really, um, but you just need to like update and then you can just like start doing stuff all on Linux. Um, if you're not running AMD, uh, and you're running NVIDIA, you know, it might be a bit confusing of like why, you know, why my NVIDIA drivers aren't pre-installed. Um, that's where like some really good distros um, come, like Pop! OS, uh, you can boot into the NVIDIA driver boot option and it will like, ins um, it will use the NVIDIA drivers for you. And so you don't have to install it manually, even though installing it manually isn't that hard on distros like Pop! OS or Zorian OS or Ubuntu or Fedora. And with things like uh, what to use when it comes to compositors or display servers like uh, Xorg slash X11 or Wayland, which is the you know the new kid on the block that's you know uh, getting lots of development now, as X11 is kind of deprecated now. Uh, lots of developers, uh, lots of Linux distri distributions are marking uh, Xorg slash X11 to be deprecated. So. No, no more work is going to be done on X11 as it's a really old, I would say, yeah, I'm using it right now and it works fine. But, um, yeah, I've been, I've been using Wayland on KDE Plasma and that's been like such an amazing experience. And there's only been one thing and that's just OBS, uh, OBS docs, uh, don't work on OBS on Wayland. When you're in Wayland, OBS docs do not work. That's, that's the only thing. Uh, but when it comes to like playing games on Wayland, like man, it is oh, just using your, your operating system. It's like really, really smooth going around windows, moving windows around, opening apps, you know, and then playing games. It feels like it feels so smooth. And like, I remember someone said like <laughs> they had like motions uh motion sickness from um the display being so smooth and he had it on x11 and on wayland which was a bit odd i don't know if anyone else has that issue um but yeah that's about it for this video honestly there's nothing really else i can really talk about there could be some other things but that's like that's the basic rundown of how you play you know games on on linux either on steam or bottles or lutris um you know you can also use Use heroic games launcher which i won't really show i do have it installed i'm pretty sure am i being blind again i might be here it is um which is an amazing amazing epic games uh launcher and it's basically all i use it for is literally just epic games i don't use gog and i do know um that you can ins manually install games on here like bottles and like create and use you know wine stuff and create your own prefixes but um i just use this for I just use this for uh, Epic Games. It's all I use it for, and just to grab free games from the Epic Games store. Uh, it's really easy as well. You can just go to store.
stores, go to the Epic store. It will load up a, a web interface and you can just buy stuff from the Epic store or GOG. Um, you can go into settings as well and enable a couple things. You know, you can enable Discord Rich Presence. Uh, you know, you can fucking download different uh, Wine versions or Proton versions. Uh, you can go to a cool download section if you want to look at, you know, your games downloading because that not wasn't there a couple of months ago. Um, but there is a new release of Heroic coming out. That's going to be really good. But that's it for today. I would say there's nothing really else I can talk about. Uh, yeah. And, you know, if you want to, you can subscribe. We did hit uh, 150 subs like a couple of days ago, which is cool. Even though I haven't uploaded a video in two months, um, I want to thank all of you for, you know, just subbing and liking and even watching the video and you know, commenting your issues that you have. Because honestly, I do like helping out uh, people with Linux problems. Um, and just diagnosing things and seeing how can we improve on this so if you want to you can sub and you can like the video and i'll catch you guys later peace